Hey, good morning. Good evening, everyone. We're going to give it a few minutes, uh, a few minutes. We're going to give it 30 seconds for others to join, but great to have you here. And we'll get started in, a, in 30 seconds. So if you are new to Empower webinars, I have a few notes to make this experience as awesome as possible for you. At the bottom of your webinar screen, you should see a button for Q&A. We have our wonderful staff on the call in addition to our panelists today to answer all of your questions. So at any point during this session, if you have a question about Empower, the topic at hand, something different, please drop a question in there so we can get back to you as soon as possible. The sooner you drop it, the sooner we'll be able to address it. Sometimes questions toward the end are harder to address. There's only a minute or two left. So please get those questions in the Q&A field. And I think uh, it looks like we have a good group of people here now. So I think we're going to go ahead and, and get started. So great to have everyone here today. My name is Claire Allman. I'm a marketing manager with Empower Financing, and I've been here a little over five and a half years now, actually. And so it's been really incredible seeing the company grow and also growing the company with these wonderful people here with me today, our esteemed panelists. Something that I've always loved about Empower is that sort of we have a staff of former international students that are really passionate about making the journey better for future international students like you. And so I'm gonna have Silver, Ron, and Zem introduce themselves in a moment. They'll tell you a little bit more about their international student journey. We'll go through some of our programmed uh, material where we'll take you through our application and some of the more common pitfalls that students run into. And then last, in the last half hour of this session, we'll have about 30 minutes at least for your questions. I see we already have four, so please keep dropping them in. So I'm going to send out a poll for everyone, launching that now, and then why everyone completes that, our panelists can introduce themselves. So starting with you, Silver, do you mind introducing yourselves for our group today? Hi, everyone. My name is Silver. Um, I work at Empower Financing for marketing and business development. I'm from China, and I was an international student myself. So my, it's, my, it's my passion to help uh, more, more students uh, like me from around the world to have access to overseas education. Uh, I'm very happy to be here and answer all your questions. Thanks, Silver. Over to you, Ron. Tell us more. Sure. <clears throat> sure. Hey guys, uh, my name is Ron. I've been with Empower for around five years now. And like Silver, I'm also originally an international student. Uh, Empower is actually my first job after I finished my master's degree in the US. So it's pretty exciting. I really like working here because of all the people that we have here. And everyone here is pretty passionate about getting uh, getting people to come to the US or Canada to study because we think that's how, that's how you can uh, improve your life. So yeah, so a little bit about me. Thanks, Ron. Gazem, introduce yourself. <laughs> Hi there. Uh, my name is Gazem. I'm with customer relations team. Um, I've been here for four years, uh, like everybody else, tenured here. Um, I've been an international student as well. So being here and then helping you guys walk through the applications and how we can make this better for you is very important. And to make those life changes that I was able to do and then able to reflect that on you. And thank you for having me today here. Awesome. So you have 30 seconds to complete the poll. And I know I just said 30 seconds. It's probably gonna be closer to 10. So 10, I'm not gonna count down for you, but uh, we can presume with my awkward pausing right here, we'll get to about 10 seconds and ending the poll. Great, so today we have a great representation from Africa. That is awesome with 87%. And then runner up is South and Southeast Asia. Great to have you here. And it looks like we have some representation from everywhere, but Europe. In terms of career path, a lot of business and management students here today at almost half, 45%. And then also STEM engineering technology at 28% is certainly a runner up. And my uh, favorite question, and certainly the most important question, sweet, sour, or spicy? It seems that almost half of you are sweet people. 18% are spicy, 2% are sour, and then about a third are is a 
depends on the mood. Yeah, I've, I've got to know everyone, panelists. Sweet, sour, or spicy? Go. Uh, sure. I think it depends on my mood. I like all three. So. Definitely spicy. Nice. I will go with because I'm spicy. Me too. <laughs> we have three, three spicy yeah. and it depends on the mood. So pretty cool. And then it looks like our attendees make up with the with the sweet. Great. So I'm going to stop sharing the poll and we're going to jump right in. So Gazem, I'm going to turn it over to you to take everyone here through the application. Sounds wonderful. So actually, I'm going to share my screen if that's OK, so that we can walk through together and talk about what can make this application successful. Right. First of all, you go to Empower's website, you check your eligibility. And when you're checking the eligibility, it's crucial that you put the school, right, degree, loan amount, and academic period. So why is this important is that we support certain schools and also they have their campus, right? Some campuses may be different. It's very crucial that you always check what school we support, right? And then sometimes it may not come eligible, right? Because we don't support that school. So we need to know that you're attending a school that we support because we disperse the funds right to school as well. Degree, we want to understand what degree you're working on. We support um, all degree seeking um, programs and all majors. However, there may be some other degrees that we're supporting. So please provide all that information, whether it's postgraduate diploma, certification, and we want to understand how much do you need from us because the maximum we can provide for a lifetime is $100,000 in US dollars. And academic period, it needs to be within 12 months from today. So as an example, today is August 17th. So if we think about 12 months from now to the future, it would be August again, right? So your semester should cover from now until then. So this would be meaning fall 22, spring 23, summer 23, and soon to be fall 23 when we open that up. Um, so these are very important aspects. And then basic information, we're gonna walk through each uh, page as to what it looks like and what we need to do. We will need your personal information. We need your ID, your immigration status, so we understand where you are in your current journey and your permanent and current address. We're gonna talk about this. This is a very crucial angle of this. Uh, school and employment, we want to understand which school, right? And then what is your expected graduation date for that current school? And we're gonna talk more about that. Your programs, if you have any English test scores, or standardized test scores such as GMAT, GRE, and if you worked somewhere before. Um, financial information, we're gonna deep dive. Um, we want to understand how much do you need as funding, as like, what, what is your cost until graduation? And what funding currently do you have to support that other than Empower? And we will have some disclosures about um, credit pool and truth in lending, et cetera. And then in the end, you're gonna put your valid government photo ID, hopefully preferably passport. If not, you can put your national ID and then we're gonna, you're gonna submit your application. Uh, so this is the first page that you will go in there. So if you're thinking about studying, you didn't start yet, um, we will ask you to come back, right? If that's not in your work. Um, if you applied or you've been conditionally accepted, uh, you can choose that. And if you've been accepted to study, meaning that um, you have full admission letter uh, without any conditions, you would choose that. And conditions may depend on maybe something is pending from your end for the school. Currently enrolled means maybe you just started or you finish at least one semester. And how did you hear about us? Wherever you heard from us, it can be um, any channel you may you might have heard from the university. So it's important for us to understand how you also heard from about us. So when we look at the basic information, we need your first name, last name. If you prefer a name, we'll definitely use that. You can choose um, how you want to be saluted, meaning like Mr., Mrs., Miss. And then we need to know your citizenship country. Um, this will be, and what, what your immigration status is. One of the areas here is, we see, uh, I know there are drop-downs. Because of the drop-downs, sometimes things may be chosen differently. So when we choose it, if you're an international student, meaning 
you are not a DACA student or you're not on permanent residency or not a US citizen, you'll need to choose that. If you choose this incorrectly, and then let's say you're DACA, like you chose as DACA, but you're not, this can cause you to start a new application. So this is because there are certain things that are linked to the application where we cannot fix. So it's very crucial that before you submit this, please check what immigration status you choose that is relevant to your current situation. If you, you don't have to have visa, but if you have visa in the US, you can put that. And if you have visa, we will ask what type of visa you're on. You don't have to have social security number uh, because you don't have to have credit history in the US. So if you don't have it, you can say no, and it's not going to affect your application. If you say yes, we would like to see that because uh, credit history pool we're going to talk about will uh, play an impact on that. Date of birth is month, day, and year. So sometimes there are uh, challenges here, date to month. So please, uh, date to month. So please ensure that that's correct. An identification number, we preferably would like to see passport. So you would put your passport number. Um, where you're located, right? Are you located in the US? If you are, we would like to know that phone number. If you're not, don't worry, you don't have to be. We need your phone number currently, wherever you are and your personal email and alternate personal email is also good. So if we're not able to reach out to you for your next steps with that current email, we can do it with the secondary email and phone number. And you can put your preferred communication. Time zones are also there. So whatever your time zone is, we're going to translate it and see if we can reach out to you within that time frame. And you can choose if you love email and phone or you prefer either of the methods. Uh, current program. So university will already be there because you're going to choose it from eligibility. So you will have degree options. You can choose, you can say other. So it may be something like certification or you have bachelor's, master's. PhD, so you will be able to choose it. And then from major, you may not have the exact major, please select the uh, most matching one. So you may have uh, environmental and civil engineering, but may we may only have environmental engineering or civil engineering. You can choose either or, because when we get the documentation, because anything that you provide here will need documentation, right? So we understand where you are currently and in the future. So it will be very crucial that you choose the closest. And when we get your admission letter, for example, we'll be able to put that into action. If you have a dual degree and STEM, this is very important. So if you're doing engineering, that's normally STEM, right? Please choose that. If it's a degree that you are sure it's STEM that is designated by the university as STEM, please choose it. We may ask for more clarification, of course, as to normally this is not a STEM degree, what, what can you provide to us, right? And then if you're a transfer student from US, to, from a US school to another, you would put that program start date is the actual university program start date, not the loan start date. Please ensure that you put when you're actually starting and this is month and year, you don't need to worry about which day actually you're starting. Expected graduation date populates when you're filling out the eligibility. So if you put one and a half years, it will populate the exact uh, month and year from the program start date. So it's very crucial that you put exactly how long this program is going to take. You can look at the university website. If they say two years exactly or 24 months. You can put that if they say 18 months, you can put that. So we get the right expected graduation date because we want to ensure that this is correct because this is an impactful side of things. And GPA is only for this current university. Let's say you want to go to Holt University, you didn't start yet. You would not put your GPA for the previous university that you're coming from. We need it for the loan university. If you did not start, it's okay. You can leave it blank. As far as employment information is concerned, if you have any post-graduation job offer, you can put that. If you don't have it, it's okay. One of the things that uh, I want to also talk here is countries where you're currently authorized to work. You can put whatever you're authorized to work. So that also gives us a clear picture. If you have internship offer, you don't have to have it. If you have it, please provide all the information to us. Uh, then we will probably get the documentation for it that can definitely help in the future for your application. And if you have any employment history and you don't have to have it, but if you do, please provide how long. Right. And then you will need to input what where you're going to work. So 
or where you worked. So with the funding, this is also very crucial. So if you guys look at it, academic year. So normally, according to our logic, academic year is fall to spring. So fall starts from August, ends in December, and spring starts from January, ends in May. Summer is June and July. So thinking about what the estimated tuition costs in US dollars. So if you're going to a Canadian university, you want to ensure that you convert it to US dollars for us and we appreciate that. So we have that clear picture. You'll put the yearly amounts here. So if you're not sure what type of, like, what is your tuition cost, you can definitely go to your school's website, uh, search by cost of attendance. You'll definitely know it. It's very important that we see a clear picture here of your tuition costs, cost of living, which can be housing, food, and transportation. And if you're unsure, um, university website normally tells the living expenses. You can put that figure and any additional expenses such as health insurance, right? And it's maybe books. So please also put them in there for the yearly amount. Then you're going to choose semesters until graduation. So if you have quarter system or anything like that, um, you will need to convert it to semesters. So if we look at it from quarter system, right? One year is two semesters, two semesters are four quarters normally. And if you have any other system, please look at it from what is one year for me. So if you have two semesters until graduation is equal to one. So this total estimated cost will populate by auto calculation. If you put yearly amounts, two semesters is a year. So this is the sum. If you have four semesters, two years, right? So if you have um, normal like annual figures here, one year, it will be multiplied with two. Then it will come here. So please ensure that this area is also correct. And any funding that you have available to you, it's maybe personal funding, maybe your family is sponsoring your friends. You may have um, employer sponsorship from your previous um, employer. You may have scholarships. We want to see what they are. And if there are multiple, you can choose multiple and how much it is in US dollars because we'll need proof for this to see you really have that. Because if you put your application correctly from the beginning, it will help you in when, you're, uh, when we're collecting documents. Then when you look at the funding requested here, total empower funding requests until graduation. So the maximum you can get is 100,000 totally, right? Since it's totally 100,000 and you need to look at what your costs are and what your funding is available to you, then you can be like, for example, I need 80,000, but that 80,000 is not in one application because the maximum you can apply per application an academic period that can be semester academic year is 50,000. So where you see first empower funding amount requested here, will always be maximum 50,000. So if you need 80,000 to graduate, first 50,000, let's say you applied for fall 22, you will need to start a new application for $30,000, let's say for spring 23, which needs to be a different semester or academic period. Um, then summary of your financials. So we see we populate your costs, funding available to you and what Empower funding you need. And we want to understand if you're able to cover all of your costs until graduation with your funding available to you and what you require from Empower. If you see that there is a shortfall, let's say your costs are 100,000, you said I have 10,000 and I need 20,000 from Empower, right? So what is coming into you is 10 plus 20 is 30,000. And then costs are hundreds, right? Hundreds minus 30 is there's still a differentiation or difference of 70,000 that needs to be covered. So please ensure you put the right amount of funding that you need from Empower and any available funding available to you. This is very crucial. And if you have any debt, you can also put that here, not future Empower debt, but anything that you have already existing debt so that we can also collect that information. Then what you're gonna do is upload your documents here. You can choose national ID, passport, et cetera. And then when it's uploaded, you submit this, then uh, we're gonna do an initial review of your written application. That's it from me. Thank you so much, Kazem. And so if you joined us a little late, uh, a, a few reminders. One, if you have questions about anything Gazem just shared or anything related to Empower Loans at all, 
drop them in the Q&A function and we'll either get back to you live a little later in this session or directly in the chat function. And then we will definitely be sending out this recording and these materials afterwards. So uh, I, I see a few questions about that as well. So Gazem just did an amazing job taking us through the Empower loan application. Now we're gonna switch over to Ron, who is in our underwriting team. And he's gonna answer or, or talk about a little bit some of the common shortfalls or mistakes that often um, we see in addition to some other fun underwriting facts. And so if you're not familiar with the word underwriting, Ron's the one who's reviewing your application once it's submitted. That's it. Sorry, Ron, I didn't mean to diminish your position. That's not quite it, but <laughs> great. So we have, I think we have two groups of students here, basically students looking for funding for the semester about to start and students looking for funding for next year. So for mm -hmm. that first group of students, Ron, students that are looking for fall 22 funding, can they still get money with Empower? Yeah, definitely. Like we still provide funding up until December. So as long as until then, you can still apply for a loan with us. So we've seen this happen a lot where students, sometimes they come to the US and then they realize like, okay, the amount of funds that I brought with me are not kind of enough to cover my education for the first semester. And even in those cases, you can always still apply for an Empower loan. And, you'll, and in those cases, I would recommend getting it expedited because of the time crunch that you're in because you have to pay for your fees for school start. otherwise you may not be allowed to attend classes so yeah we still accept uh, loan applications up until december for the current semester amazing so if i'm going into the fall 22 semester about now i could apply for a loan if i need it now and i could apply for a loan at the end if i need it right so it's kind of like whenever you need it awesome so Second question is, if for that other group of students, they're planning for next year, how early they, can they apply for an Empower loan? Yeah, so ideally, we, we accept applications up to a year in advance, but uh, to make it easier for you all, I would recommend uh, once you have like the admission letter, that's when your application will actually get processed faster, because if you don't have an admission letter, we can't really do anything without it. Like you're not even sure if you're going to that school. So there's no point in going through the entire application process. I would say you can start the application. And once you get the admission later, that's when it'll actually, that's when you'll actually get decisions from us about it. Got it. So you can apply for up to 12 months before the program starts. And then as soon as you've applied, you can give it, give it a start, but you'll, uh, once you're accepted, you can make it all the way through. Yeah, cool. exactly. You can submit it. Like you can submit all your documents only after your uh, admitted, like after you have your admission letter with you. Great. So I think the the next question then is if students can still get, still get money, how fast is the process? Uh, it really depends. Right now we are having a lot of volume because again, like it's the time crunch, a lot of like colleges are starting, colleges and schools are starting this month. So a lot of people are actually applying. So there's a huge, uh, there's a huge amount of volume that we actually have to work through. But uh, I would say uh, on average, I think we try to give our decisions between five to 10 business days if everything in the application is complete. But however, if there's something wrong, like how Gizem was uh, mentioning, like some mistakes are there, or, like there's some, like say even your name is mismatched from like what's on your passport to what you entered in the application, that can also cause some delays. It may not be significant delays, but it'll cause some delays. But like if you enter the wrong major or you select the wrong graduation day, things like that, those can cause longer days because there'll be a lot of back and forth that happens between you and Empire just to make sure all the information is correct. So yeah, I would I would say try to avoid those kind of mistakes and your application will get processed within five to 10 business days. Nice. So it, if you, uh, basically this sounds like the fastest way to get your application approved is one to submit it, shocking. And then the other one is to make sure all your details are correct before submitting it. So if, um, you know, five to 10 business days, if I'm a student that has classes starting soon or I just got a visa interview, is there a way to expedite a request if I have a date or, you know, something coming up that I need urgent attention? Yeah, for expedited requests, you actually have to reach out to uh, the uh, the relationship manager who's assigned to you. And uh, you also have to give them like a good reason as to why you need it. A good one would be like Claire's example said, uh, you have a visa interview on like Monday. And like, even if, like if your visa interviews on Monday and you try to expire it on uh, like Thursday or Friday, we'll try to get you that decision before Monday. So you'll have the letter to go into your visa appointment. Awesome. And so last question before I move on to Silver to talk about uh, just some more interesting things about our about our loan. So Ron, what's the one mistake you see the most often if you can kind of pinpoint to the most frequent mistake that's made on the application? Uh, I can give you 
to like one one is more of a document and one is like just while filling out the application uh so the document that i see the most mistakes on is the is like the bank statement document usually students say they have funds of like say ten thousand dollars but on the bank statement it's only two or three thousand dollars so just make sure uh that like if you have two three thousand just say it's two three thousand and we can still go ahead with your application the issue comes up when you say ten thousand and then you it's only two three thousand then we again have to reach out to you then the 10 day timeline starts again. So that causes the most amount of delays. The most amount of time where we have to like keep going the back and forth between you and Empower that causes the delays. And uh, for the uh, for the other question that you asked was, uh, was like the major mistake that you make. I've seen a lot of places where the graduation date is actually before the loan start date. That can also cause a lot of issues because again, there's back and forth. So just make sure to like uh, check that once before you submit. I understand on the website, it's it's easy to get confused because you have to select the drop down and change the year to 23 or 24 when you're graduating. And if you're just going on selecting, it's usually you uh, you start your program in in August, but then your graduation date is in May. So you started in August 2021, but then you forget to change it to 2023. So your grad date is May 2021, which just not possible. So yeah, that can also cause significant delays in your application. So we're not, wow. So like just everyone, if you can mention just two things from Ron, these are the two things to make your experience great. One is check your dates and make sure you're putting in what we're asking for. Graduation start date, loan start date. You probably want the money before you graduate, just an assumption there. And then also for bank statements, we get a lot of questions where people ask, why do you need a bank statement? The documents we ask in the application after you submit it, we're just verifying what you said is actually what's going on. That's it. So we trust you, but we're verifying all those numbers. So whatever numbers you put in the application, just make sure they match the documentation you have that you'll need to provide at the end as well. Awesome. So we have Gazem's great application walkthrough. We just went through Ron's underwriting uh, pitfalls. Last and never least, we have Silver, who's going to talk through uh, some more of our loan benefits for those that are newer to Empower and actually some things you might not even know about. So Silver, what are some things that you think, you know, just based on your experience working at Empower and also as international students, that students should keep in mind when applying and studying abroad? Um, sorry, when applying, not also studying abroad. Um, yeah, I think that just behind a uh, bit, Besides of our uh, loan application that Gizem just uh, walk us through, um, there are also many other perks that you can enjoy with uh, Empower Financing. And I will talk about it one by one. Uh, in general, there are like four benefits that you can claim with Empower Financing after you submit your loan application. My first one is that uh, we offer up to 1.5%. Uh, of the interest rate discounts. Um, and the second one is that we actually help with your visa application or help with you to get your I-20 with one of our support schools in the US. Um, the, the third one is that uh, we offer a career support, which is free to all of our customers. Uh, it's called Pass to Success Program. And we offer you um, resume may proofreading uh, like mock interviews uh, and uh, career development consultation in that program. Um, and we also have referral program that can help you to earn some pocket money if you know have uh, any friends uh, who you might think that they will need a loan. Uh, so I will talk those in de detail. Uh, first one, I'll talk about the uh, interest rate discount which is up to 1.5%. And that's available to uh, all of our customers who have a uh, dispersed uh, loan with Empower. Um, so how do you claim the 1.5% of the interest rate discount? First way is to enroll in AutoPay. So once you start to repay your loan, um, you need to, uh, it's, it's better if you enroll in AutoPay and which, which means that uh, we will charge you um, every month automatically uh, when you enroll and we will, you give, we will give you 0.5% of the interest rate deduction um, as long as you remain enrolled. And the second one is that if you make consistent payment for six consecutive months, and then you will be able to get another 0.5% uh, of the interest rate discount. 
And the third one is once you complete your study and show us a proof of your graduation, and uh, also once you um, find a job and show us a full-time uh, job offer. And once you've done that, and we'll give you another 0.5% of the interest rate discount. So in total it's 1.5%. Um, it's actually quite a good benefit uh, to reduce your monthly payment. And another benefit is the visa uh, support. Once your loan get approved um, from us, and if you haven't uh, started your visa application yet and you need your help in, and you need our help and we will pro provide you a visa support letter, which means it's a um, proof of funding. You can show to your school to, uh, uh, to obtain I-20 and uh, after that, and you will use our visa, visa support letter on top of your I-20 to get a uh, your visa approved from embassy in the uh, for US and Canada. And the third benefit is the path to success uh, career support, as I said, is free to uh, all of our existing customers. And the third one is the referral program. And uh, this can, this is actually really um, good if you need some pocket money. Um, if you have a friend that who will need uh, funding, for their education, and uh, please recommend them uh, to apply this Empower Financing. And to, to do that, once your friend completes their application with us, you will get uh, $300 in Amazon gift card, and your friend will get $100 in Amazon gift card. And to recommend your friend, uh, you should have them visit our, our website and also uh, mention your name in the application. And what, what you need to do is that you can also, maybe I can share my screen. Um, and maybe we can, we can maybe save this towards the, okay. Send it, yeah, we can send it out afterwards maybe. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we have, we have a page is called referral friend on our website and uh, please visit that and put in your friend's name and their email address to help us to identify which one is your friend. And your, your friend also need to identify you in the application. And Silver said Amazon gift cards, but fun fact, we have grown. So you can get uh, actually cash, a Visa gift card uh, and other gift cards. It's not limited to Amazon. And our program works around the world. So I know some referral programs are limited by geography. Ours is not. So if you know students that need money for school and you think Empower is a great fit, you've got nothing to lose, recommend them. If they're approved, they'll get $100, and then you will also get $300. So it's a win-win-win. Um, and then, Silver, I'm so sorry to cut you off. We're running a little short on time, so I might move us ahead to the Q&A Q &A section. But So that means if you have not asked us a question yet in the Q&A uh, field, now is the time. It's at the bottom of the screen. This is where we take your questions and answer them live, and then also some of our uh chat moderators will jump in and answer the more complex ones uh, using the chat function. But thank you, Gazem, Ron, and Silver for sharing your insights. And I'm actually going to have Silver answer the first question. So Silver, we talked about gap loans earlier, which is sort of an industry term. Can you tell us a little bit more about what um, the loan amounts Empower offers? For, for gap loans? I know sometimes the loan needs are different for this population. For yeah, I know, um, okay, I can answer that, that question. So yeah, not all students that would, would need us to fund their full education, their full tuition. Um, actually, Empower's loan can be used not only on tuition fee, but also on your living expense. And our, our loan limit is a maximum uh, of 100K and a minimum of uh, $2,001. Yeah, so re remember the minimum and uh, it's $2,001 per application and it can help you to cover some pocket money uh, if you, you feel that, hey, I've already pre prepared money for my education, but I think that I, I need more money to buy a textbook or like buy insurance uh, and uh, you can still uh, get a loan from us. Uh, to cover that. Um, and always remember to talk to the financial aid office in your school 
and to confirm that how will they um, transfer or send some even expense amount to your account to make sure that it will go smooth. That is a great point, Silver. So we disperse or we send all of our all the loan money to your school directly. And so what you can use those funds for is determined by your school. So check in with your school to figure out first how you can use the funds before making making your plans. But uh, that's a great, great add on, Silver. So Ron, I have a question for you. Um, so I think I have questions sort of like from two different angles. How do we yeah. use, do we use the current salary, the current wealth of the individual um, on their current, like how much money they're making at their current job to make a loan decision? Um, and it, basically we have people asking if I, about if I don't like their current employment history and like whether making money now makes a difference or not. Uh, yeah, that definitely helps. Like this is in general on all credit applications. Like it definitely helps. Like the more money you kind of make now, it definitely helps in your application to probably get approved. So just share as much information as you can with us. And it definitely will not hurt your chances at getting approved. Cool. So basically showing you have more money doesn't hurt your chances. Yeah. Great. So Ron, as a, as a follow-up um, question, so many people have already gotten uh, are in our loan process and they've been approved. Mm -hmm. What are next steps for those students if they've been approved? Uh, so if you're approved, there are, there are two different kind of, two or three different kind of buckets I'm going to classify in. One is where you only got the support letter from us and we are still waiting for the I-20 document from you guys. So that, so that bucket is like, we are still waiting on some documents from you. The second one is you have we received your I-20, everything is done. You got your approval till where you actually have to sign documents with Empower. And that's the second stage. After that second stage happens, there's a little back and forth that happens between Empower and the school. Uh, so it takes some time. And then we also have like a decision period, which is three days after we get all the information from the school, which is to give you a chance to change your mind. Maybe you want to take the Empower loan. Maybe you don't want to take it. So by law, we give you three days to decide that. And after you... So that's the second bucket. And the third bucket is when you actually find, sign your final loan documents, that's it. Uh, then your loan will just be disbursed to your school when the school requested it. And so Gazam, I'm gonna call on you first, but you might end up passing this back to Ron. So let's say the money's been dispersed to the school. How does repayment work um, for the student? Definitely. So it depends on how much of it is dispersed. So if you're applying for two semesters, we're going to only disperse the one that is future coming, like the, the near future, right? So if you have an application for fall 22 and spring 23, we're going to disperse the fall 22 portion. Like if it's a U.S. school, the school gives us the uh, disbursement dates. If it's a Canadian university, we don't have that process, you can tell us, hey, I need it this time, then we'll uh, do the disbursement accordingly. Once that happens, um, it may take 21 to 60 days for the serve uh, for the loan to be serviced. When it's serviced, you'll make, make payments. So the payments will start while in school as interest only uh, while you're in school plus six months after graduation. For example, if your school is for two years, you will be making interest on the payments for two and a half years because there is also that six months after you graduate. So we give you enough time to be able to graduate and find a job so you can afford principal plus interest payments, which starts after the six months period, which is 10 years um, after you finish that. Uh, so you have 10 years of principal plus interest payments. If you want to pay off your loan earlier, you're more than welcome. There is no prepayment penalty. And um, actually, Silver also talked about interest rate discounts, right? That goes with it too. So you can qualify for those interest rate discounts even while you're in school. So you can start saving some money from that time. Excellent. So sort of moving back to questions about how interest rates work. So Silver, can you tell our audience what the difference is between a, a loan that has a fixed rate versus a variable rate? And then maybe Ron can pick up anything that he thinks is pertinent. Yeah, sure. So Empower, what we offer is a fixed interest rate loan. I think we are the, probably the only uh, institution that offer fixed interest rate loan for international students with no co-signer or collateral. 
Uh, usually, a bank offer fixed interest rate on loans, but this collateral and cosign a requirement. But uh, we don't do that, and which is a very good news for students. Um, and there are two two different uh, interest rates on the market. One is the one that we offer, fixed interest rate, and the other one is called variable interest rate that you may see uh, from other lenders. And uh, why fixed interest rate is is better than variable interest rate? Uh, actually, especially in the recent year, with our global environment um, changing rap rapidly, with this pandemic, um, with with some some countries experiencing maybe economic declining situation. Uh, fixed interest rate has lower risk compared to variable interest rate. And it also helps you to pre predict your uh, monthly payment uh, after your loan is dispersed. Um, so it's not like, easy to plan your future payment and also lower um, risk. And very, very stable. Uh, your interest rate will not change uh, for the whole lifetime uh, with Empower. And I think Ron can add up. Uh, so, yeah, sure. I can just give you a few examples over there. Uh, so like everyone knows like this is the rising interest rate environment. So if you took a loan from Empower, say last year, your interest rate would still be 1199. But if you took it from anyone else, I think it started at uh, seven plus three percentage points of, uh, so seven is the fixed part. And then the variable part is like what changes every month, depending on the central bank. So right now, say if you took the loan from some other lender last year, uh, that started at say 10%, but this year, because the interest rates have already gone up by 2%, this year your interest rate would be 12%. And from the looks of things, it's just gonna keep rising. So that's not a really good position for a student to be in. I can tell you this uh, firsthand because uh, that can actually have a very, very big uh, difference in the amount of money you pay every month. So. In the example that I gave you, Empower's loan for the next 10 years, you would only be paying around $220 every month for a $10,000 loan. But if you were on the variable schedule for last year, you would have probably paid a little less, probably 200. This year it would be 220, next year probably 240. In like five years, it may be 300 or 350. So that's actually the major risk that uh, you guys would be in the position of we don't really want to do that that's why we have the fixed variable rate so you know exactly the amount you're going to pay until the end period of your loan until the date your loan closes fantastic so you talked a little bit about interest rates we have a fixed product or a fixed rate product and most of our i believe all our other competition out there is variable rates so you don't always know what your payment is going to look like so that's when you're actually making re repayment um, Ron, can you tell us a little bit more about what the grace period looks like? I see a few questions about that. And I think we touched on it earlier, but just a little bit more, more detail. Yeah, sure. So the grace period is six months after you graduate. So we give you time so that when, because usually once you graduate, you're like looking for a job or like you're moving cities, you're doing multiple things. So we don't want to put that kind of burden on you in that period. So we give you six months to get everything in order, go get, find a job, move to your new city, get settled everywhere, get, get everything down. And that's when your payments will actually grow, will actually go up. Uh, so in the same example that I gave you, let's use the same numbers. Uh, so you would be paying $200 only interest every month uh, for two and a half years, once you get your loan or like once you graduate. Uh, and uh, as soon as you graduate, that number would probably go up to around 320 because then you would be hundred dollars. Then you would be paying a hundred dollars towards principal and the remaining 200 to 20 towards interest. So that's how so that calculation. What goes. happened? Um, maybe because I'm gonna have out here. What happens if I, you know, having trouble making my in-school payments? I'm busy with my course load, or I don't get a job as fast as I want. What do, What do I do in that situation? Um, Gazem. Definitely. Um. Things can happen. We cannot, it can be unexpected any time. Always reach out to us to see what type of options we may have for you. Uh, and then uh, the servicing team normally handles this. So they're going to be able to give you suggestions and advice. And please ensure that also take uh, consideration into the interest rate discounts because that can save you a lot of money uh, that you don't need to spare anymore so but besides that you can always reach out to our servicing team we'll be happy to help you further and so we really want to help you we're not here to come come at you uh, and and uh, we're not hunting you down we want to work with you so if things aren't going well 
please reach out so we can come up with a, a plan that makes sense for everyone. We want you to be successful in school and life. You obviously want the same thing. So our number one message there is please reach out and, and we will absolutely work with you. So Ron, a very exciting topic of test scores. So this individual wants to know about whether TOEFL is required, and maybe you can talk a little bit more about how Empower operates with test scores. Sure. Uh, TOEFL is not really required. You can still submit your application. You'll get approved and everything without the test scores. But again, it's not like it hurts your application. It always helps it. So if you have like a TOEFL score, if you have an IELTS score, you can enter it. Uh, the score, uh, it matters sometimes. Most of the time, it does not matter. But if you have the, if you have, if you've taken that exam, just, enter the details and it'll probably help out your application. Great. And then, Ron, I think a lot of these questions are oriented at you, but a uh, question about social security numbers. If this individual got one late, wants to know how to update it. Um, so maybe more of a broader topic about how does social security numbers work their application? Do we require them? And then if they are issued one, how does that work? Yeah, sure. So when you're actually applying, if you don't have one, completely understandable, you're in your home country. When I went to the US, I didn't have a social security number till like six months later. So yeah, you don't have to put it in your application. But uh, the important part about once you get your social security number and why it's important to update it, it actually helps you build your credit score because Empower reports to the credit bureaus. And if your uh, social security number is up to date with us, we'll report the up to date number to the bureaus and that'll actually help you build your credit history more accurately. So as soon as you get your SSN, like, try to update it. You'll get an email also with details of how to do it. You can always contact us and tell us, oh, I just got my social security number. Can you update it for me? And we'll be glad to do that. Great. So I think a lot of the, a lot of the messaging we have today is, hey, reach out, we'll help you. If you don't know how to reach out, a few different options. One, there's a contact us page that we post in the chat that's best for general inquiries. Heads up that we get a lot of them. So that as much information as you can provide helps us uh, help you. Next is once you're in our, our process and you've submitted your app, you're assigned a relationship manager. So you should have some communications from them in your inbox. The fastest way to get help is to respond to them uh, and basically ask for help. Gazem, is there any other language or suggestions you have if someone needs to get in touch with us um, quickly or even just non-urgently? Is email the best or what, do you, what are your recommendations typically? Um, normally email would be the best. Uh, my suggestions first, of course, right there to help you, but due to high volume of applications, sometimes it can take longer. Please give us some time. And it's very important that your subject line, like if it's urgent, of course, because we're helping people literally needing a loan tomorrow sometimes right because we want to ensure that they everybody achieves their educational goal if you think that it's not urgent you can also put it in the subject line and then if you can detail exactly what you need um, and asking those questions uh, our relationship managers may give you a call and please provide your phone number there what is reachable and when you're reachable or they may answer you in the email in details so that you get your answers fully and correctly. But please give us some time. Um, if it's urgent, please also put that in the subject line that it's urgent and you definitely need the loan like very, very soon. Okay, thank you. Uh, so, some follow up there though. I just want oh, to yeah. make sure like if you're using that urgent subject line, you actually need your loan in the next three yes. days. Like please don't... Yes. Uh, Please don't expedite requests if you're like if your mm -hmm. program is starting in like next semester, if you're starting in winter, there's no real reason to expedite it unless you have a visa interview. So like just make sure that you guys keep your uh, urgent requests or expedite requests manageable. And you guys, you guys Help should be the other international manager. students too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's, it's the students that actually need a be having a visa appointment tomorrow. Make sure they have they can get that visa interview. Um or <laughs> make sure that we can help them too. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Fantastic. I'm just kind of looking through what questions we have left that a lot of people are answering. Um, I have one follow up from something I said or we said earlier about interest rates. If you're curious what your interest rate is going to be or what your payment is going to look like, there's a calculator on our website um, and more information on our website and our chat moderator can drop a link to it um, as a guideline to help you plan. But we do have that that available for you. And so, Ron, if someone needs to make a change to their application, I, this is going to be similar to other things, any app, any change, 
did do that what do they do i see i i know we get a lot of people that submit a second application i know that's the wrong answer yeah i would say don't submit a separate second application it may take us longer to review both your applications because then both of them will get stuck and then we'll need more clarification from you guys so my recommendation would be to kind of reach out to your relationship manager and like the advice we give for most things yeah reach out to them and like they they'll be able to change anything on your application that needs to be changed Great. So we are in our last 10 minutes of this session. Uh, if you have not yet asked a question, please go ahead. This is the time to figure out um, what you don't know. So we have time to get back to you quickly today. So sort of closing up what we reviewed uh, today. Silver, what, um, as an international student, and I know you're from China, do you have any special advice or, or messages for future international students, either generally or for those from China? Um, okay, um, I do have some advice just from my personal experience. Um, I think if you're from foreign country, especially if you grow up in foreign country and uh, not taking lots of trips, travels uh, before you uh, officially studying abroad. Um, and you may be experience many uh, culture shock uh, once you come to the US or Canada. And uh, once you have that, uh, keep in mind just to be open uh, to the people who are around you, to their behavior, to, to their way of thinking. And because uh, because they may think in different way, they may talk in different way, and uh, they may even look in different way. Uh, and try try your very best to uh, adapt to the, the situation and also uh, try try your very best to maintain a good GPA because um, that will actually help with your graduation in time and also help with your future uh, career support. Right, and so Ron, I kind of I know I actually know the advice you normally give international students. Uh, so what's your what's your tip? Uh, mine was actually pretty similar to silver. So yeah, but uh, apart from that, I would say try to talk to a professors a lot. I think that also really helps, especially if you're new. They can actually like I've seen a lot of professors who were also they also pretty much started out as international students, so they'll have like some good advice for you guys. So that's one thing. And yeah, another thing like GPS, like silver said, the GPA is pretty important. So like try to focus in school, and yeah, that's pretty much it. Great. Because um, what's your, as a former international student, what's your piece of advice for everyone here? Definitely. First of all, be excited and soak everything in, right? But at the same time, don't drop what you need in the future because future comes very fast uh, when you're an international student. So look at your future, what your plans are, and act accordingly, like they were mentioning, right? Uh, GPA is very important. Um, also, talking to professors and your uh, international student office, it's very crucial that you include them so you can tell them this is what I want to do. It may be on campus employment after you finish university. They are very helpful uh, to ensure that you they you do what you're supposed to do and what you need. So they can also guide you as to what else you can do. Maybe go to career um, uh, 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 information sessions and all of those. And we also have, if you're a borrower, we also have some sessions. Please take advantage of everything around you. Great. So obviously Empower is the best international loan product for international students. Uh, we know it. So I'm going to ask each of you to share what what's the number one reason we're the number one loan product company for international students. And once again, I'm going to start with Silver. Um, can you please add that question again? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I can make it real short. Why is Empower the best? Okay, why is Empower the best? Um, I think, first of all, we actually care about our students. And there are many lenders out there in the market that they care more about their profit. And so their, their pro product is not designed uh, specific for international students, unlike us. And we don't require co-signer, we don't re require collateral, and we don't require you to um, have a credit score in the U.S. Um, and we try to e evaluate your profile in a comprehensive way, and we don't um, have to um, make you to, to show us the, the, the um, 
sponsored funds you have from your family if you don't have one. Uh, and you yourself can apply zong loan, and we don't need your parents to show up to um, prove to us um, that you have the ability to repay zong loan. And we we trust your uh, fu future, and we we trust uh, you will have the the ability to grow successfully on yourself. I think that's why we are the best. Yeah, that is a. That is a that is not one reason. That is infinite reasons. We're we're pretty awesome. Uh, Ron, what's why? Why do you think Empower is the best? Uh, okay, I'm going to keep it pretty technical. I think we are the only ones that give you a fixed interest rate, and I think you can't really beat that in this current environment. So that's one of the reasons for today. Like we are literally the best. Like it's it's on paper. Like you can do the calculations, and we are the best. So, so don't just believe us. Do the math. <laughs> we, yeah, are. we are. Yeah, yeah. It's great. And so, Gazem, why is Empower the best product for international students, or why is Empower awesome? Well, I'm not going to be able to beat Silver's. Uh, <laughs> um, why we're the best? We're the best for all of those things. Of course, cause we don't have any cost on collateral. We look at your future potential versus what you have, because when you come to the US or Canada, you're not gonna be able to work full time. How, how are we gonna look at things, right? So we have a very different measure so that you don't need to worry about that, right? And if you don't have any credit history uh, in, in your home country, that's perfect, the fine. If you have it, we'll look at it. However, if you don't have it, that's gonna help you still. Um, this We don't look at the credit score, right? In addition to that, this company was built on compassion, for sure. That's why fixed rates are there. And then also interest-only payments, actually, while in school, will help you build your U.S. credit history, which will be very crucial for you. While you're studying, if you want to rent a house, if you want to get a job, even with some jobs that this is asked, or if you want to get any type of credit card, credit score is very crucial in the U.S. So that's also going to help you. Uh, that's how we determine to put the repayment structure. Great. Thank you three so much. My simple answer for why Empower is the best is the people. It's the people we help and the people here working in the company. So great team and a great mission to help everyone here uh, pursue a further education and advance their advance their dreams. So thank you everyone for joining us today for this live session, which was focused on our application process and some technical loan questions. We'll send out a recording of this session afterwards or send out some of the materials that we showed today during the session. We also send out a feedback form or a survey that asks some questions about was this useful, was it not useful, but the really important one is what else do you want to see in a session like this? So if there are certain topics that you think are complex and you would really love a live session for, please make some recommendations and we'll see what we can do in future months. But otherwise, thanks again for coming today and we'll hope to see you next time. Uh, thanks panelists, uh, Silver, Gazem, and Ron for sharing your insights today. Thanks guys. Bye. All right, and then we'll stay, we'll stay on another 10 minutes or so to answer remaining questions where we can. So uh, heads up there, but otherwise, thanks everyone. Sorry for interrupting the goodbyes. <laughs>